just print money out of literally nothing and that decides the value of everything teachers that'll go blast at me for trying to tell people about bitcoin they'll say oh that's a scam that's a scam they don't even know about it they're not even encouraging learning the dollar will forever be going straight down it will delete the ability for government to act selfishly bitcoin will be the backbone of money and it'll keep everything in check and it should improve quality of life You are my youngest guest, I think by far. Uh, my, my till now youngest guest was 19. I mm -hmm. think he was 19. How old are you? I am 15. Oh yeah, like oh okay, not by far, like four years younger. Yeah? Let's mm -hmm. let's see if we can get younger than that at some point. But yeah, four, I don't know. 15 is already very young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um what 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 made you understand Bitcoin in, at, at such a young age? I, I can remember it in my age or in, in your age. Uh I would I didn't even understand what money is, like not even a clue. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty common question, I would say, considering how young I am. And my mom was probably the very first reason because she works very hard to take care of me and my brother and she kind of just would tell me about over the years of how stuff is getting more expensive at the grocery store and simple stuff like that and it kind of at first it didn't like matter to me of course because i was really young so like say i was 10 11 12 i was like oh yeah that's strange but i still want to go play video games and that's about it and then i would say maybe around like 13 i started feeling the need to want to be ahead in life when I was older. So this is before I even knew about Bitcoin or anything. And I really was like, yeah, I don't want to work like 10 hours a day for the rest of my life once I turn 18 and older. And I was like dedicated on that. And I had zero clue how that was going to happen. I was thinking of being an entrepreneur or anything. And I was just hoping to find something I could start working on. And then my mom found Bitcoin. And I think it was like 2022. I think Christmas of 22, 2020, I think. Um, yeah, I think it was 2020, the Christmas. And she would have tons of videos up on the TV out in the living room. And I would be hearing them all the time. She'd tell me about it. Hey, go listen to this. Go listen to this. I don't really care. That was back by COVID and everybody was at home. We were all playing video games. And one thing I realized was that some kids have it better than other people. When it comes to going and buying shoes and expensive stuff, like some kids could go to the mall. Like one of the big examples I use is I use is whenever I go to the mall with some friends. Like in the past, they can go and find some nice pairs of Jordans or something, some expensive shoes, and they're, hey mom, can I spend three hundred fifty dollars on this pair of shoes? And they say, yep. They swipe the card, and simple as that. They don't understand how much work went into that and how they're not really that valuable at all, considering you wear them around on the floor. The whole day and we're all kids that'll grow out of them in a few years and with that i kind of started getting interested in how money works and how it's like kind of messed up my mom would tell me about it so then i went down the rabbit hole at one point out of my own curiosity and of course my mom was already into bitcoin so started learning about some bitcoin stuff and i read some Bitcoin books, like I have a few back there. I don't know if you can see them. And I would say that was it. And that's what got me into it. So that the, the injustice of the system that you saw, um, uh, and it's also interesting how you got motivated of like, oh, I don't want to work 10 hours a day to, yeah. to, to come. Like uh, what, what did trigger that? Like how, how did that come up? So what triggered me to not want to work that much is probably social media if i'm being honest originally back whenever i was 10 11 12 i had tiktok I'd scroll on it sometimes i wasn't ever on my devices as much as the average kid i would always enjoy going outside way more riding bikes we, me and my friends would make ramps outside and would crash and all the fun stuff but when i was online normally it would be like motivational stuff and one of the big things was all of the money stuff I would see. I would see videos of people owning Lamborghinis and let's just say like rich stuff. I don't know if they were staged or not. Chances are they were just to get views because that's how most of the stuff is. Then it kind of, I just took interest to that. Like I had zero want to go and work hours and hours and hours to barely meet ends meet like many, many, many adults do now because it's not their fault. And that's what 
kind of was started leaning into was figuring out how to get ahead. And at first I realized if you just put in at first, I thought if you just work hard, so let's just say you work hard at McDonald's, for example, you'll move up the chain and eventually become a boss and then you'll make a lot of money. That's what I first thought when I was young. And then as I started diving deeper, I realized that's it's just simply not true. Nowadays, whenever you work as hard as you can, you will still not get anywhere in terms of succeeding. I also heard, I don't know, I, th I think I heard that you uh, also uh, read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I think that was also for me really uh, influential in my, my early days. Um, did you read it and, and w did it change your views also on, on, on that? Which book it cut out really quick? Oh, hear uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Rich Dad Poor Dad, yes. I did read like 90% of the book. That was the first um, book I probably read, I think. Told my mom to get it. And I saw that on social media, actually, for some of the people saying, read this, read that. It was my first book. And I really enjoyed the book. Of course, some of the stuff didn't apply to Bitcoin. That was the very first book I read. It kind of taught me a little bit about debt and how that system works, and how it's really not fair and how some people take advantage of it. And some people don't. And one of the biggest things I realized is that we don't get taught how to take advantage of it in school on purpose. So that's one of the biggest ways they're getting at us starting at a very young age. Why do you think it's uh, important that people uh, at your age or like, like we are actually from the same generation, we are both Gen Cs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most people will probably would not give me a Gen Cs, but Gen Cs are, is still 1997, I think. And I'm 1998, so I'm on the upper bound of, of, of uh, Gen Z. Um, why do you think it's, it's so important uh, for us young folks to understand uh, Bitcoin? Well, I think it's really important for people to understand Bitcoin because it's more than just a way to get a return on investment. So when I talk to like financial dads or anybody in school, I would say parents, like when I'm out at a little party or something, they talk to me if I'm wearing a Bitcoin shirt. A lot of the biggest things I hear is Bitcoin is a scam. They'll be like, hey, Ben, you know, Bitcoin is a scam. Be careful because people aren't really educated. And then... I try to explain to them that it's much more than just trying to get money back. And I go into saying how it's debased and how it's its own way of money. It's like something we've never seen before. It's connected in a whole other like dimension. That's how I think about it in my brain, like a very complicated way. So I start to try to explain to them that side of it, I would say. Mm, interesting. Uh <laughs> How successful are you with, with talking to your peers uh, in, in uh, about Bitcoin and money? So last year was whenever I first started picking it up in my brain a lot and started being able to explain it. Wasn't as well last year, but this year I'm starting to get into some kids' brains. Like I'm telling them to install a little wall on their phone. I can send them a few sats and just trying to start to get them hooked. Like every now everybody knows I'm not wrong. But people are still like worried about trying to jump in because they just probably are procrastinating or feeling, oh, if everybody else is going to college and working, I'll do the same thing. It'll work out fine. But then they don't realize how fast money is going bad at an exponential rate. They think it's just going to keep going steady like this or down, I would say. They think, but in reality, it's going to go like this. And once you get stuck down here, when it's going straight down, it's impossible to get back up to either own a house or a car or anything worth value. Is, is that a thing that uh, that that you want to have a house someday? Do you want to have a thing, and, and then you just see like the that the progress, like the the progress is like always harder and harder. Like the the house yeah. and, and the expensive stuff like <laughs> keeps getting further away from you. Yeah, that's one of the main things I realized with my mom helping me realize that is that to own like valuable assets, I should say a house, it's going to get harder and harder and harder for you to have all that money to spend and put down on a house and keep that money up. It's just going to be impossible because they're going to get more and more expensive because the top like 10% are going to own all the houses. And they're going to keep making stuff more and more expensive while the bottom doesn't have any money coming in with assets flowing and the top does. So then it's just going to keep making a bigger and bigger gap between the rich and the poor. I think that it is going to be important for people to realize that it's going to be probably impossible for anybody to own a house in the future. The houses are going to get really expensive because of 
the inflationary system. And they teach in school that it is normal for stuff to go up in value. And they say that in all the economics classes and stuff, which I'm in high school now, so I'm starting to see some of it and realize how like rigged it is and even the teaching is wrong. Like there's some teachers that'll go blast at me for trying to tell people about Bitcoin. I'll say, oh, that's a scam. That's a scam. They don't even know about it. So they're not even encouraging learning or learning outside of the box. So I feel like people are just going to be trapped in the state of being very behind, being in debt by a lot without any assets coming in. We're going to spend and spend and spend without money that we have. And then it'll just leave us in a trap for like our whole lives pretty much. And that's going to keep happening more and more at an exponential rate with how money is right now. Wait, wait so, so teachers um, c call attack you basically for for you being in bitcoin and and uh, yeah. they say that you have a, like a scam going yeah some some teachers have before not all of them but there are some like last year i had a teacher whenever i was talking about bitcoin to some kids like well, during some off work time when we were all doing work and able to talk and i was just talking about it and they were starting to ask questions kind of starting to get hooked i mean like how do you buy it how Do you not get scammed? How do you make sure they're sending it to you if you're sending them money? And I was answering all the questions, and then the teacher uh, just kind of jumped in and was like, Ben, you know, Bitcoin is a scam. And then she is the teacher, so she was talking with authority. She was talking pretty loud, so the whole class would hear, more than just the kids I was next to. And then I said, how is it a scam to her? And she said, because it's not backed by any government. And it's just backed by people. So it's a big Ponzi scam is what she said. And I said, that's just simply not true. Because if it's backed by everybody around the world, then that means it's more secure than the government's money, which is just backed by their words, which is equal to nothing because they're just rich people that say stuff. And then she got kind of upset because I wasn't arguing, but she said something and I said something back. And then she kind of that she didn't raise her voice but that's when she got kind of upset so i kind of backed down and then she was like no that's not true bitcoin is a scam and kind of just shut the whole thing up which the kids were like whoa that was kind of weird why did the teacher get so defensive on the money thing so that's one thing that happened last year and that was pretty crazy in my opinion considering she's a teacher teaching the 30 kids in the class try to trying to teach them to be better for their future. And they, she just pulled that out all of a sudden. Was that teacher an economics teacher or just no. like a general? It was a general teacher. I'm not going to say who it is in case somehow uh, they see I, it I at some know, point. I don't understand. You should not say any names. But uh, it's interesting when, when we talk about uh, teachers that are not only in economics. I mean, oh, for, for, for an economics teacher, it would even be worse <laughs> in, in my understanding. Uh, yeah, sometimes. But just for for teachers to just get involved with that and, and trying to like, it, it, it feels more and more that school is less for to learn something and more to get an ideology in, in, in kids. Do, do you feel like that? Yeah, completely for sure. Like they are teaching us how to stay inside of the box and not ever try to jump out and become successful. Or in my opinion, would be successful. If you, Do what everybody else does. You won't have what you want to have because most people don't have what you want to have. And there's a lot of reasons why, but the very base of it is money and how it works. Because like some people would say, oh, well, everybody can't be rich, which is true depending on what your definition of rich is. But everybody could have more than what we have, like in the past. Like I don't, I'm not good with numbers because I'm not old. Like I haven't lived in the 70s, 80s, 90s. But I have heard from reading about my mom that, like, in general, everything was a little bit easier back then. Like you could have a family of four, and a husband work a job, a normal job like a plumber, or work for a company or a corporation, and that husband would bring in enough money for the whole family to have a decent sized house, a car. And would be pretty fine. We'd go to college for that and would have a pretty good life because he worked hard and did what he wanted to do. And it just works out like the original American dream. You go to school, you go to college and you'll be set up for the rest of your life. Now, that's just so not true because of how messed up everything is with money and how much that exponential line is moving. 
all the money is flowing to, I'm just going to say, the top 10% faster and faster and faster. And it'll just keep happening like that. So they'll keep collecting money, leaving less money for people down here. So the more money they put in, the more money that goes up like that, everybody down here doesn't get any money coming down because they get paid the same amount, whether people up here are getting more or less. Mm. I, I love that a lot that you, uh, that you already see that. Like I, I needed like at least like 23 or four to get that. Um, kudos to you. Um, what do you think, uh, in general is, is, because school is an interesting thing for me. Like, first of all, I, I think it's good that young people learn uh, the basics and learn a lot, but uh, it's not good to use that system uh, to, to bring some ideology in, into society. Like, that's, that's not true. Uh, that should not uh, be the case. And I also think, like, uh, you should always have the possibility to, possibility to have kids schooled at home if the parents can do that, like that's a hard thing uh, for, for parents to do because you need the time and the money, um, which mo most uh, don't have both uh, because of <laughs> the, the fiat system. Um, what, what do you think is, is, is wrong with the, with the school system and what, what would you improve? Uh, interesting for you to hear because you're right now still in there. Yeah, I think there's a lot wrong with the school system. Like more than ever now that I'm done with elementary school, in middle school, I can see kind of how much time I'm wasting at school. School is like eight hours a day, not counting sports. And I go to, I have four periods. I don't have eight. I have a block schedule and each class is an hour and 30 minutes. And I would say we do on average, like I would get 15 minutes of learning done and maybe 40 minutes of work, which is just like fake work. Like you just have to read stuff and write stuff. You're not, you're not actually engaged. And 15 minutes of learning is not a lot, in my opinion, for having an hour and 30 minute class. I think that school could be much shorter and we would learn the same amount if everybody was actually engaged. But I think school is just in place for teaching us how to work a normal schedule, like an eight hour a day schedule. It's the same thing. We have breaks. And I think it's designed to just keep us locked in like that. And homeschooling, which I know a lot of people that do homeschooling, I'm, I'm located in Florida, so we have Florida Virtual School, which is a online school provided by the state, and that any kid could do it, and you don't need a parent to teach you because you do it on the computer, which a lot could argue you need to go in in person, which I agree that you should have friends, be able to play sports, which you can do online nowadays. You can still play sports at a school. I'm not going to get deep into that. But if you could have your own schedule, you can get all your schoolwork done online, which they learn the same amount in two and a half hours every single day. Two and a half hours to three hours a day for four days a week instead of five days. Because so I know a couple of kids that do that. And then they have their whole day to go and play their sports. They could work. They could go engage in a business. They could intern for somebody. I feel like if we could have actual school scheduled like that, it could be very beneficial. But then the kids that aren't interested in the future will not do anything beneficial, which that could create problems. So there's two sides of it. And a lot of it has to do with parenting. A lot of it has to deal with whether the kid's brain is opened up or not opened up, like how mature they are or unmature. Like, I don't really, I don't really know how to explain it, but you get what I'm saying? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's, um, I, I think we need, um, we need to, get back to resp being responsible, like giving mm -hmm. individuals more freedom to um, succeed, but also to mess up. Like uh, the school system is designed, so you basically cannot really uh, mess up anything. Like you, you just go there, you sit there. If, if you're like most people come through school and they, they get some degree, uh, even if, if, if they don't, uh, do anything great in there, but it's like, it's, it's a school system designed to, to make you conform, as you said, with like the, the work hours and to make you conform with like a normal work schedule so you can be good in a normal work job. And that's fine if people want to do that. Like that's like, that's not, not something bad. Yeah. Um, but, but I think people we need should to have, have another an option. Like people should yeah, know that, there's another option and not 
be like hidden from that or keep their eyes closed. That's what school does, I would say. Like I used to talk about it as in goggles. You can have different lenses of how you see the world. Like I used to just see like whenever I was younger, only things I really thought about was friends, food slash candy, and like video games and having fun with sports. Now it's much more than that. My time preference has gotten a lot larger, which that comes with maturing. And I'm I'm seeing everything much differently now that I know about Bitcoin and proof of work and how nothing is free and how they just print money out of literally nothing. And that decides the value of everything. And I think people should take that a little bit more seriously. Like you can be a like a painter or a dancer that you don't actually provide anything that has like needed value to somebody. I don't know. I don't know how to say that in a rude way. Like you don't need a painting to survive, but there are plenty of artists that get plenty of money, which I think that's fine. But even an artist would have to understand how money works so they can make the right decisions on how to survive and what to buy and what not to buy and how to use their debt. That's very true. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting when when you talk about uh like like i think financial literacy is something that people with like 50 60 years old sometimes don't know about uh so it's always interesting to to hear people really young uh getting it how would you say right now in your peers group and maybe also like in school um how much financial literacy is is taught and uh how much financial literacy do you see in your peers group uh very low amount. I'm taking economics now. Wait, no, I took economics. I'm taking economics last year. I'm taking marketing right now because that's the only class I could take. And I'm also taking finance. School just started, so I'm still getting my schedules down. And even with those two classes, which I like those classes because I'm just getting to engage in at least something that I like in school. Those classes, people don't really care at all about money so they won't learn like one thing i've noticed with playing video games i used to play video games a whole lot which is normal because i also played sports so i was still healthy is i learned how to learn playing video games because i would take them very seriously which may sound kind of nerdy or bad or whatever but whenever i would start to do something new i would obsess into it i'd figure out how to learn so i feel like with that i've learned how to learn very well School just doesn't teach that the same way. And if nobody wants to learn and isn't obsessed, then they won't retain any of the information, which that's fine for like math and reading because all they want us to do is get an A on a test once a week and we'll never see that subject again until the end of the year for the final exam, which then it's just one of each thing pretty much. With them having us learn like that, we won't care about anything we learn and it's teaching us that learning is boring. Learning is a one-week process of doing this, memorizing it for just a week with a couple flashcards, and putting down the answer, and you never see it again. When I think learning is very much different than that, and it's I can see the effect of it having on kids. Now kids are starting to want money. They're starting to want to buy their own shoes, and they're realizing, oh crap, $350 takes a long time to save up with when having to pay taxes and all the other expenses they're having to pay for. And that's going to start teaching them. But I feel like by the time people start graduating from high school, getting into college, they're making those lifelong decisions of getting into debt before learning about money or literature, money, literature, money, literature. So I'm glad I'm, I can't speak that well right now, but you get what I'm saying? They'll get into problems before actually understanding what they're getting into due to money not being taught at all at school. And I wouldn't even define it as money. I would just say proof of work and how everybody's time is valuable and depending on how they spend it. 100% and, and you're speaking really good. I, I love it a lot. Um, how would you say has, has Bitcoin then already influenced uh, your, your life and your view of things? Yes, yeah, so I would say it has a lot. This I could yap about it for a very, very long time. Bitcoin has taught me, like I've been saying, proof of work. And I'll just do a little deep dive because I've been thinking about it on this crazy 
way of like in my brain dimensions. I know it's not scientific, like dimension, dimensional planes and everything is completely different on a scientific level. So I've heard Jack Mahler talk about it this way, but I've been thinking about it this way since last year. I used to draw it up on the boards for fun. Bitcoin is very interesting in terms of how it exists because it like kind of scratches your brain at first. Like it doesn't make any sense how it exists, but you can't see it. You can't hold it. Unlike, unlike money, which you can hold it, except money is nothing more than a piece of paper, which people don't really see that. They're like, oh, I want, I would rather have a hundred dollar bill than one Bitcoin. So you've probably seen clips of people getting asked on the street, which of course that's just reviews because nobody knew what Bitcoin was back then. So here, would you rather have this hundred dollar bill or I'll send you one real Bitcoin? And they'll be like, well, how do I know what Bitcoin is? How do I know it's not fake? How do I know it won't become fake in the future? Or get shut down, but I know that hundred dollar bill is worth something. A hundred dollar bill is worth something, according to our government, and proof of stake that they will hold it up, and we're trusting them, not verifying. We're just trusting them to do what they say, and they'll keep it afloat. While Bitcoin is very much different. You cannot hold Bitcoin. You can't see it, but it does exist. So I'm gonna say, time goes like this. On a plane, uh, my, I'm moving my hands right now, so I hope the video goes through later. And then space, the other dimension, is a circle that goes around the plane of time. Inside of the time plane, which is two lines, there is energy, which I normally just draw little circles. Pretty simple. And that's what reality we live in is in between time, space, open space, and energy. With all of us together, that's what we see in living, for example. Even mm -hmm. our own eyes deceive us with energy, so we can't even fully trust our eyes. But one thing we can trust is time, or at least our perception of time. Because something we can always know, there's a past, there's a now, and there's a future. Bitcoin is very interesting because it doesn't lay inside of our um, time, space, and energy dimension it lays outside of it, like completely outside of it, except it's in the time and it is in the space, but it's not in the same one we're in because we can't see it and we can't hold it. Like it's not, it doesn't have real energy linked all together. But of course, you, I know you already know how Bitcoin works, but many other people don't. It is linked to our dimension with proof of work and and how math keeps it all together. That's like my absolute favorite part is how math is the only true way of thinking in my opinion. I know base I'm not a technical person, but code goes all the way down to ones and zeros, the very basics. And without that, of course you wouldn't know anything. The government does not use math. Like they don't nothing is backed any anybody could press a button and have more money be printed and doesn't have any value at all. But Bitcoin has value decided by everybody around the world and it's backed by everybody around the world. And I just like I, I could yap about it for a long time and try to get how I think about it over here, but I'm not gonna try to do that. That would be like impossible. But I hope you try I hope you kinda get what I'm saying. And how it's not in our reality, but it's linked to it and it exists just as much as a brick does, if not more, if not more, because we know the math is true, but you know, our eyes can deceive us very much so with lots of things, as well as our hands, as well as our touch, our senses. We're more unreliable than math is itself. So math is true. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep 
their Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still their Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your Bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin. Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing coin vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. Absolutely. And it's also interesting how uh, when you talk to a, a normie, he also thinks like that, that fiat money is uh, a, re a real thing. Like he actually thinks like this, this piece of paper has value. Uh, and I, I'm stunned by how many people still believe that, uh, that the current, the fiat currency is still backed by gold. Oh my <laughs> gosh, is, me too. Uh, I hear it in school uh, all the time. Actually, do you, you still, still hear it? Yeah, not not by teachers as much. I had one teacher think that it was backed by gold. And they said like it was backed not by actual gold, but by like paper gold or something. That was a bit ago. I don't I don't remember completely about that, but somebody kind of thought that. But lots of the kids still think that money is equal to gold, and that's why it has value, which is crazy that they don't know that. Like I don't understand how. That's not. As soon as we get into 6th, 7th, and 8th grade and we start having to make money decisions, I think the first thing we should be taught is that money is not backed by gold and that you have to have a constant flow of it to keep your time and energy, as in wealth, the stuff you've worked for, to keep it equal the same to everything else you buy and spend. You have to be constantly having and making more and more of it which it shouldn't be that way at all. I think that's one of the first things we should learn, but nobody teaches us that at all. I think that's very sad that we don't get taught that. Nobody knows. Do you think that the, the fiat system uh, in, in general could die off within your lifespan? I think about that a lot. Like Those are one of those thoughts I just have. I'm going to bed or something. Like If Bitcoin is so good, and like it's just it's just such an amazing creation. It's like the first thing we've created that actually checks all the boxes off for perfect money I mean if everybody knew about it and understood it without a doubt all the lower class that isn't already ahead using fiat would switch to it immediately if everybody could understand it magically uh like by overnight like if what's that one quote if everybody realized how uh the government and money worked overnight there would be world war three in the morning I think it's something like that. Something crazy like that. If everybody figured it out, everybody would jump off of the dollar and all the other currencies and onto Bitcoin pretty much right away. They realized how good it is. Even if the even if on a chart Bitcoin is going like this, straight up, if everybody truly understood it, how I do and most other real Bitcoiners know, it's always gonna be worth more than dollars because dollars, how we think about it on when we view in like trading view or any type of chart 
dollars has let's just say one dollar is straight across and then the whatever we're comparing it to goes up and down if we use bitcoin as straight across one bitcoin then the dollar will forever be going straight down it's just how it works that's what i that's what i try to tell people is that the dollar will forever be going straight down and bitcoin will either be equal or will be growing in value as more people adopt it. Sure, right now, it goes up and down compared to the dollar, but I would say going up and down compared to going straight down, like for a one-year chart, is still more valuable. Like, and if you go to four years and eight years, it's just without a doubt. Like, if I had the time to sit down and talk with anybody for five, ten minutes, that was an adult or a teenager, they would completely understand what I'm saying. You get what I mean? Mm, yeah, it's also interesting uh, um, how how early we are in in, in that game uh, when we think about it. And um, do you also like what, what is kind of your vision for for Bitcoin? Like, what what does uh, Bitcoin is successful? Like, let's say Bitcoin is successful in fifty years, uh, mm -hmm. or like even like seventy years. What that, does that mean uh, for you? Uh, Bitcoin being successful, what does it look like? Yeah, so I'm not. Uh a macroeconomic genius but i do know that governments are going to still need power like we won't have a government no government system for hundreds of years because we're humans we're still dummies and people for will forever be thieves and steal stuff we'll always need at least in my lifetime in my opinion we'll need a government to keep us safe and the basics but as people start to know we have bitcoin for our value and our monetary system i think that bitcoin will be like a backbone to keeping everything in check like everything it will delete the ability for government to act selfishly because if they do everybody will just go to bitcoin if they i think that it won't be only bitcoin i don't think that it'll work like that for a bit if it unless Crazy, crazy stuff. I don't know. I don't actually think Bitcoin, it won't ever be just Bitcoin, at least in my lifetime. But I think Bitcoin will be the backbone of money and it'll keep everything in check and it should improve quality of life, in my opinion. I don't know how the road's going to go to get there, though. I think that could be rough, depending on how stuff goes. Because, like, either the government could accept it or they could completely flip upside down and view it as a humongous threat to all civilization and government. I'm not really sure. Like that's just an open question. It's like possible to really know, but uh, it's, it's a lot. You get what I mean? It is a lot. It's, it's there's so many variables at play and yeah. uh, to, to understand that like if uh, um, it's also interesting to, to, to speculate, uh, exactly about that. Like how does Bitcoin look like in 20, 30, 50 years, um, will be very interesting to see what, what, what will be possible and what will not be possible. So, uh, it, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to a world with, with Bitcoin and I'm like, yeah. As yourself, you, you, we are both like kind of on the start of our lives and I think we will see, uh, um, a crazy Bitcoin world, uh, Bitcoin adoption uh, within our lives. And yeah. I hope we can see like a, a full Bitcoin standard at some point, or if not us, at least our kids. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's what that's what I'm thinking. By Bitcoin standard, I don't like, I can't jump exactly. And I don't mean everybody only uses Bitcoin. If there's no dollars at all, then there's no government. Or if there's no money for the government, then the government just can't exist. But if there's Bitcoin and dollars, or they somehow come up with an online dollars backed by Bitcoin or something like that, then I think we could see a Bitcoin standard world plus whatever country you're living in, currency usage like that. So then if the government was... um using bitcoin and was i don't want to say backed by bitcoin but like had bitcoin as a standard way of having a currency and without over inflating anything or without funding wars with money they don't have at all because i hope there won't be any wars in the future 
because there's no reason to have them with how advanced civilization is now. I don't want to get into that. That's very political. I don't really have a say on that considering I'm so young, but I just don't like the idea of people getting hurt, if you get what I'm saying. And I think that if the government was scared to lose their population's um, side with their currency, then they wouldn't make as many radical decisions and would be more balanced with their power and how they press buttons to print trillions of dollars within seconds just because they want to boost the economy for one year and don't really care about the effects it'll have in 10 years. Do you get what I'm saying? Because then if they do make a decision like that and people are educated and know that Bitcoin exists, then they'll be like, oh, well, I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm going to use Bitcoin for now because they're being dumb. They're going completely off track of what they should be doing. And I know that's not a good thing. That would be if everybody knew that Bitcoin exists and everybody kind of understood how money worked better. So a Bitcoin standard, basically, and how proof of work works. Yeah, totally. And it's uh, like, it's, it's interesting because like government has two ways to fund themselves, like taxes and, and inflation, uh, like money printing, mm -hmm. uh, which is like if, if inflation money printing falls away, they have to convince people to pay taxes, um, which then is also way harder when they have, uh, uh, sound money, which can be transferred so easily. So there's like a game theory, uh, starting mm -hmm. around nation states that, Like, oh, I have the lowest taxes for Bitcoin. No, I have the lowest tax. We already see it a little bit, like El Salvador mm -hmm. uh, and, and other nations. Maybe even like with the US when, when Trump comes in and maybe he does uh, de delete capital gains tax on, on Bitcoin. Not impossible, but yeah, very, a lot of variables till there. Yeah. Um, re really interesting what's, what's happening uh, with the world. For sure. And, And also interesting, uh, what, what you are doing, uh, what projects, uh, are you working currently on, uh, in, in Bitcoin? Yeah. So I am currently a student athlete and a full-time high schooler. So a student athlete. So I would say the majority of my day is not spent working on Bitcoin, which is true. Don't want to lie or ever say I am when I'm not, but my values of life will always be buy Bitcoin. Like I, I live in orange world, not a red or a blue or just school or just football or just dopamine, have fun. I live in orange world, which I would say is pretty balanced. My goal is to stay balanced with everything I'm doing between time preference. If I'm too, too far ahead, then I just won't enjoy my time now. I could burn out and that would be really sucky. Like I'm not going to torture myself by not ever going out with my friends just to work on my future. I will do it more than I'll say the average kid my age would, which is fine, because in my opinion, that would be a balance. But I would say I keep it balanced. What I'm working on right now is I'm, all, I'm part of this group that one of my friend's dad started that is about teenagers trying to get ahead. And it's not just Bitcoin, it's economics, and there's some trading in it. But I'm working with that, and I'm going to be leading the Bitcoin classes, and I'm going to try to work with that and see if we can get some of the kids out to Bitcoin conferences in the future and see how that could work. And I'm also working on a project online. Let me check so I can make sure I get the name right. Get the wrong thing, because that would be very bad. I am working on it really quick so i can see the link path to satoshi.com with a friend and that's just a little website that's meant to teach and give a basic understanding and information of bitcoin to anybody who has questions it has some questions that are listed common questions you click on it it's supposed to give a explanation with a picture easy to understand within a few paragraphs Because I don't like telling people, go read this book, because they won't read the book unless they have more questions. You can only like start reading, like for kids my age at least, they don't have a humongous wonder, then they won't put in hours of work to figure something out unless they have a reason to. So what the stuff I'm working on is to give a reason to want them to learn. And I'm going to be working on more projects as much as I can in the future. 
try to get out to conferences and stuff. As soon as football season ends, I'm going to have a lot of time. And that's when I'm going to really try to pick everything up. And I need a job. I do not have a job right now. So I need to find some ways to start stacking sets. Yeah, that's about it. I'm not doing too much actively, but I'm just a Bitcoiner trying to help, trying to do my best I can right now with my age. Really cool. I love what you're doing. And I also saw you attended Nashville. Is that right? Yes, that was very nice. I really like seeing what, the city. What, what, what was your key takeaway from from the, the bit uh, from from this bit big Bitcoin conference? Probably getting to meet everybody I met in in Miami. It was just such a good experience to like escape my world back at home of being made fun of to being accepted and admired for doing what I do. It's probably my favorite thing. So just the whole thing together. And I love getting to meet other people who think the same because it's so rare to see the whole year that I was stuck at home, like very rarely meeting somebody that thinks the same, who's probably like 40 years older than me, some kid's dad, like that's the max I would meet who has somewhat the same vision, not even being Bitcoiners, but at the conference, just meeting all the Bitcoiners, all thinking the same. It just feels like a very unique experience. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you get that pushback the, that you described before from the teachers that they're calling Bitcoin a scam also from your peers, actually? Sometimes, sometimes. Now I'm kind of known as a nerd. Not not in a bad way. Not nerd is in a like weird nerd. Nerd is in I know what I'm doing. People know that I know what I'm doing, but they don't really care. Like no I've last year was most of the not arguments but conversations I had with people about it who were like trying to They would say, I'm trying to help you by telling you what's a scam. It went up before, but then everybody knows it crashed and it's going to zero. There was kids that would tell me that, which I'm, I think it's cool that they at least have heard of it before. But from social media side, they just say and hear whatever social media wants them to say and hear. And it spreads like a wildfire about with social media and TikTok. And all the reels, all the apps that you just scroll with your phone or your thumb, one video, one video, one video. If you scroll for 30 minutes, you could be, you could have your mind completely changed about something and be completely false just off of how convincing and psychological those videos are. And they're crafted to be meant for certain age groups. Like you should see the steps people go to to trick people's brains. And get those likes and subscribes, whether they're spreading good information or bad information, which is what I would say I battle up against the most would be the groups. People go in groups. Like let's just say there's a group of people that all have a certain jacket. Normally, the jacket they're wearing is expensive because that's what's cool nowadays is to have the popular expensive thing. If I have a jacket... That is not expensive, but it's comfortable and it gives me superpowers. It's just for fun. You get what I'm saying? It gives me superpowers. Even though it gives me superpowers and it's more comfortable, and it's cool. The group will stay with their group and will say, that's not cool. It's not, it's not good. And I don't care. It gives you superpowers because ours is better. They feel safe. Saying that because they have everybody standing around them saying the same thing. They're afraid to be like outside of the bubble because you won't get hate. I wouldn't say nowadays. Maybe a few years ago you would get hate. On my school, there isn't really bullying, but there are definitely sides with everything. If you're not in a group, then you have nothing to really protect you, like protect your opinions. If you have your own opinions, and if it's not with a group, then you could get made fun of or feel left out or something like that, which I'm fine with because I truly believe what I say and know. They don't really believe in anything they say or know as long as it goes with the group and flows with social media and everything like that. You get what I'm saying? Do, do you also see a kind of a critical thinking crisis when, when, you, when I hear For sure. you talking like that? It's like, uh, we just follow the, the crowd. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Critical thinking is probably one of my favorite things to do. Like, I'm one of those weird kids that I kind of enjoy 
or have enjoyed sometimes taking the math testing, the state testing, which is just the big test at the end of the year, because I get to sit down for some time. I mean, I guess I enjoy it for like 30 minutes, and then I get bored. But I like doing math. I love math. Right now, I'm just in like geometry, which is basic math. And I enjoy having to use my brain to figure something out. Like, it's probably just one of my favorite things. I love figuring stuff out and learning and like being able to think differently than just being stuck on the same track. So critical thinking. I do not like reading or writing that much. I'm not that good with it. Because with reading and writing, as I've saw in school, at least at the high school level and middle school level, you are taught to do everything a certain way or else you get a bad grade. You write your essay this way with this many words, speaking from this point of view and only from this way in a certain format or else you get a bad grade which I don't like that at all, which I know it's important for like college or whatever, even though now everybody has robots do their stuff for them. I do like math and science as it requires critical thinking. And I think that it should be put more important than it is right now because everybody now just cheats on it. So there's no critical thinking at all. People can't decide things for themselves at all and will only decide things as a group. And even if people, like let's just say a kid is like, oh, maybe my jacket isn't as good as his superpowers jacket. They're just too scared to go actually learn and think for themselves to say anything about it. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I never thought about it, but like, right. When I think back at my school time, the all the school assignments could be solved by ChatGPT really quickly now, mm -hmm. uh, which which kind of turns off like, oh, why, why, why do you need for, to... to <laughs> think for yourself if you just get an assignment you do it with chat gpt uh, and then like one week before the test you like hammer everything in your brain so one day after you you forget everything is, is mm -hmm. that reality i think that is reality in school right now i think that information we learn a lot of the times is pointless which i think that is okay like you won't remember some of the things from math 10 years from now which is normal but you will remember how you learned. If you are good at learning, then I think your ability to do stuff in the future and be able to work certain jobs and be able to just figure certain things out, like being able to use your brain is, I think, such an important thing. And of course, having the ability to look it up, which is what you will do when you're an adult or use a robot is cool. But if the kids in school only do that for their work, They're not learning how to learn. Like, I could really care less whatever you're learning. Like, it doesn't normally matter. Like, of course, history is pretty important. So learning that's nice. And math is pretty important. Like, algebra, I would say, is really important. And learning how to graph stuff and plan out your money. But then, of course, in the future, you can take a picture of any number equation, and it gets solved by a robot instantly. If you don't learn how to learn, do the math and like rewire your brain whenever you want, then you won't be able to make decisions for yourself. That's, uh, that's so true. Uh, one last question before we come to the end routine, I, I, I want to get into, um, does everyone know the word Bitcoin and, and do all of them affiliate something maybe it's just scam but uh, do do they all affiliate something with bitcoin my grade or people around me i wouldn't say it's completely known some people are like well, i mean of course everybody's heard the word bitcoin now from whether it's like a joke bitcoin or blah 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 bitcoin everybody's heard the word bitcoin i would say 50 percent of kids know that bitcoin is worth a lot of money no i would say more than 50 like 70, 80% of kids know Bitcoin is worth a whole lot of dollars. Like, that's one thing they can say. Yeah, Ben, isn't Bitcoin worth like $40,000 or $60,000 or $100,000? And I'm like, yeah, it's worth a lot. And they're like, why would I buy it if it's worth so much already? So, so that's one of the first things they think. And then, and then another thing is people say to scam to get you to lose your money or get you to give somebody else your money is another common thing. And yeah, I'd say those are the two most common things people think of when they hear the word Bitcoin without being taught at all or talked to 
just because of social media. Because, like, the last thing when Bitcoin was on TikTok, and I remember seeing it on TikTok, like, would be common to see videos with a couple hundred thousand likes. Those videos were promoting scams. They were promoting cryptocurrencies, like like Dogecoin. A lot of kids knew Dogecoin. A lot of kids tried to buy Dogecoin. And, of course, by the time those people were buying it, by the time social media was telling people who can't think for themselves to do it, that was a scam and it was already way too late, which is that's when all the crashes happen for all the cryptocurrencies. So social media did kind of screw over people's opinions on the word crypto slash Bitcoin. I hate when people classify Bitcoin as cryptocurrency because you already know why. They're much, much different. But I can't just say they're different. When somebody says crypto, whenever I say Bitcoin, somebody else could say, yeah, crypto's a scam. If I just say, well, they're different, that, that doesn't like mean anything. And then it's not like I have 10 minutes to sit down and tell them why. It's just stuck in their brain already because they saw a video that had a million likes that said it. They think that's more credible than the person that actually sits down and reads and learns uses my own brain. So like kids have a problem with finding the credible thinker. And I think that's one big thing too, is all the credibility is messed up because for some reason now kids think a credible person is a person that has a lot of likes or a lot of following. And that's just simply not true. That's uh, that's a really interesting one because I, f- I feel like uh, um they, they they project all the negative things that they should project on fiat uh, mm-hmm. on fiat uh, they project on Bitcoin like that someone else gets you out of their money like we know fiat is like you, you mm-hmm. don't really own it uh, someone is stealing your purchasing power so uh, it's it's interesting how, how, how it goes and uh, but it's a very I think a very bullish thing that everyone knows Bitcoin like with our uh, with our generation. There is no one in there that not at least heard about Bitcoin. Uh, and then uh, when they are now, let's say, 15, uh, and they already saw that the order price shoots up and then they're 15 and then they're getting to like 21, 22, 23. Mm-hmm. And then they're seeing, again, like the, the adoption rate of Bitcoin and the price going up. Then they're like, yeah, yeah, if, if 21, they're like, oh, Bitcoin is there for forever. And uh, why should I not get some? Because... Mm -hmm. Um, you, you are 15, so you are, are you younger or older than Bitcoin? Because, uh, it's it's right around that Um, that time. I was born, I'm not going to say the same year because there's no reason. I was born right around it within the few years. So I'm like the same age, pretty much Mm, Ninety, younger or older. So, so you, so you grew up in a world where there was always Bitcoin, which is an amazing thing yeah. uh, that you like, uh, always were in a Bitcoin world, even though we don't live on a Bitcoin standard, but yeah, there was uh, yeah. always Bitcoin. My mom actually had, when she was in college, had a friend that was a nerd, a computer nerd, how she classified him, not in a mean way. I don't use nerd as a mean term at all. So I hope all your listeners understand that not in a mean way, but some person that was into computers and into code and she told me stories about him telling her hey you should look at this bitcoin thing it's pretty cool the cryptocurrency and of course it was thought of as a cryptocurrency because that's what it was and the technology it uses was crypto and she was actually convinced that she was going to buy it in like i think like 2012 or something and then that the first time she was going to buy it she had to meet up with somebody in the McDonald's parking lot and give them $500 in return for a piece of paper that had the supposed information on it, which that sounds pretty sketchy. There was no way else she could have bought it back then. That's what she told me, at least. It probably was, but like that was the first time she was going to buy it. And then the next time, there was ways you could buy exchanges, but then she thought it was too late. And then the next time... And then the next time, and then she finally she got it in like 2020. But yeah, I think it's pretty crazy that my mom did hear of it back whenever it was first out. And I'm very glad I am a part of Bitcoin and this community that's just so great 
for everybody's future in the high time preference. Amazing. I love our interview already a lot. Um, let's come now to the end routine of, of our podcast. Um, first question of the end routine, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about? Okay, one big thing. Eat healthy and don't think that somebody won't be lying just because they're a credible doctor or expert about food. Meat is very good. I love beef very much, and I think getting properly grass-fed beef is very important. And food is a very big thing. I think food is directly connected to fiat. Like, obesity rates are going very, very, very high in America, and I think that's because the food is basically fiat. Like, a big example I could say is you could grab a box of cereal for, like, $5 at the store, It used to be like a dollar. Like I remember like five years ago, it was a dollar, but now it's five dollars magically or six for a big box of cereal that has like a total of 6,000 calories. You could eat that for like two, three days and be full and be perfectly fine and think, oh yeah, that's fine. It's six dollars on food for a few days when then a piece of beef could be like $30 for feeding two or three people and it's very expensive. But it's real food. I think food is a very important thing that people just start looking at and taking care of your health, staying in decent shape. You don't have to be a crazy athlete or wrestle or play football. But I think everybody should be staying in shape and being able to use their body. It just keeps your brain healthy. That's one thing. That's a, that's an amazing A amazing uh, learning that you got us here. Um, what, what, uh, our end routine now is where the previous guest is asking a question uh, for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And the question is a very long one, <laughs> so I might have to okay. explain it after I, I read it yeah. a little bit. Um, would you rather have all the shit coins built on top of Bitcoin, but Bitcoin has won the store of value narrative Or uh, there are no shit coins built on top of Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is only going to be used as a niche currency among a small group of people. Yeah, I may we may have to break down that question a little bit for my non-wordy brain. I'm not very good <laughs> with understanding or reading questions, if I'm being honest. But if I'm understanding the question correctly, you're saying, would I rather have Bitcoin be how it is? With a small group or all the shit coins be added onto it with yeah. it being adopted yeah. around the world. Is that correct? Yeah, it's exactly correct. Uh, because there's a lot of um, uh, discussions around like DeFi things mm -hmm. and shit coins and meme coins and ordinals on top of Bitcoin. And that, that's what I mean with, or what that's what the previous guest meant with. Uh, uh, shit coins built on top of bitcoin being honest the first thing that goes in my brain which i'm not very techy i don't really know what the new bad coins are or the new exchanges that match the two together or i don't even i'm trying to follow how people are building on bitcoin but of course i can't keep up with all the tech stuff that well it's just a lot but if you change the fundamentals of bitcoin then it's no longer bitcoin so i would say keep it in the small group then and hope that group grows if if it changes somehow to really bad and follows how shit coins go and people just build upon it and everybody switches the how it works and sides towards the other coins i think that would be equal to uh nothing it wouldn't be bitcoin anymore so i have to keep it upon the small group like you could say bitcoin's a small group right now It's going pretty good. Like it's less than 1% of the world owns it, I think. And it's going pretty great. So I think it could only go up from a small group. But if you mess it up permanently, it can only go down. So I would say keep it a small group. I love that answer a lot because uh, it shows that it's it's a pure thing. Like we, we, it's, it's more valuable to ha ha have Bitcoin as a pure thing uh, and not have Bitcoin diluted in, in something else because then Bitcoin might not be that. But there are a lot of uh, variables and a lot of things uh, 
coming into that, but it's a really interesting uh, question to think about and uh, I appreciate that answer. So um, before I let you go, Ben, uh, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions? You can find me on Twitter at um, Gen Z for BTC. And uh, where else could somebody find me? You can hopefully see me at Bitcoin conferences in the future because I'm trying to get funding and find a way to get out there because I love meeting people in person much more than online. But I'd say mainly Twitter is the big one. Gen Z for the number four BTC. It's on my shirt, but my shirt's pretty low down. And my mom also helps run that account. She has it on her phone as well. So. Don't be afraid if you are an adult. It's not weird because my mom runs it as well. I'm still a minor. But don't worry about that part of anything. My mom helps me with all that. Don't worry. I'd say that's where you can find me easily is there. Or maybe you run into me at a conference. Should be pretty cool. Are you in uh, Amsterdam? Oh, I'm in Florida. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the Bitcoin conference uh, in Amsterdam the, because you, you visited the magazine, uh, the Bitcoin magazine one in Nashville. So I thought like maybe you're also in, in Bitcoin Amsterdam. I, when is that? I don't think I'm going. I have limited ones I can go to as of right now because we don't have the most money to get out there. My mom can't miss that much work, but I don't think I'm going to Amsterdam. Yeah. I'm just asking because uh, I will probably be there uh, in in it's like October, in, uh, but it's Europe. It's a it's a long way drive for for, yeah. for you, I guess. Um, oh, drive a, a fly a long mm. a long way. Fly. It'd be cool <laughs> if I could go, but I don't think I'd be able to make it out of country yet. I have to be a little bit older, or I don't have to be older, but I mean, like I, we would have to find out ways to get there because we have to save up for about a year to go to each conference. So like last one we went to was Miami and then we went to Nashville. So then I'm trying to go to Vegas for the next one, the next big one in Vegas, I think it's at in the big dome. And I think that would be really cool. And if I could go to any more and get ways to get out there and fly, I would hundred percent go. And that would be very cool, but we have to figure out how to do that, which maybe, maybe I can figure it out. I'm not sure. I'll be looking at Twitter, seeing what I can do seeing what strings I can pull because I really, really just love getting out, getting to talk to people and spread the word and find projects to work on. And the main thing is helping my generation and even young adults figure out Bitcoin and figure out there's a better option. It's just like such a deep thing. Bitcoin, it's a crazy word. I think you, you you will succeed with that. I think you will be very successful with, with that and you will get out to a lot of conferences. Uh, I have a good feeling about that. Yeah, thank you so much. That is my goal. For my short-term goal, as we talk about in my little trading group about making goals for your life, is to be able to fly out to a few conferences a year and talk on stage about my generation and put importance into creating good content for people my age to learn. And no, is what I want to do is get out to conferences and start doing that. But I think it would be very nice. Perfect. And thank you so much for, for taking the time, Ben. Also, thank you so much, everyone uh, that is listening and watching uh, for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.